Now the first session of the morning begins. I would like to introduce uh, Professor Dr. Ayşe Gülüksel and the chairperson, Professor Dr. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, dear students, I'd like to welcome you all first session of this year 450 conference. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and I'd like to thank the organizers of the conference uh, for inviting me and for giving me the chance and the honor, the privilege to present uh, Professor Ayşe Gül Yüksel. This is an honor for me to be able to present uh, Professor Ayşe Gül Yüksel's, Ayşe Gül Hocam's uh, presentation today. Uh, Ayşe Gül Hoca uh, needs no introduction, but nevertheless, I'd like to uh, read her brief CV, which certainly does not do justice to her entire work. Uh, Professor Ayşe Gül Yüksel is a graduate of Ac American Academy for Girls and the English Department of the Faculty of Letters of Istanbul University. She received her MA from the Graduate School of Arts and Science of New York University and her PhD from the Theatre Department of Ankara University. She taught at Middle East Technical University for 17 years and became full professor in the English Department of Ankara University, Faculty of Letters, where she taught full time since 1987 until her retirement in 2006 and part-time until present. She has also been teaching part-time in the theater department of Ankara University, Faculty of Letters, the English department of Atalum University, and uh, the theater department of the State Conservatory of Hacettepe University. Ayşe Gül Hoca has been writing extensively on Turkish a Turkish theater and dramatic literature in general, and certainly uh, British uh, drama and British literature. Her articles have been published in academic journals and collective books, as well as literary and theater magazines. Some of her articles have been translated into foreign languages. She is the author of eight books on drama and theater. She has received 15 awards for her work on dramatic literature and theater. Uh, Ayşe Gül Hoca is a theater, has been a theater critic for almost 40 years, and uh, as you all know, she holds a two-weekly column at Cumhuriyet. Uh, Professor Ayşe Gül Yüksel's uh, paper today is titled The Shakespearean Variations of the Female. Ayşe Gül Hoca. Uh, and, uh, may I call you Belgian? <laughs> we have worked together for so many years, but I think this is the first time you yes. are, we, we stand at an official yes. uh, position. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I'm so happy to have her, uh, because uh, in the highly crowded classes of Bintari, the English department. We shared those around 200 students in each classroom, which only held 90, which only had 90 seats. Uh, so our body-body relationship, I think, will be going on forever. We shared the same fate for a very long time. Uh, I have written down what I have to say because I was afraid of losing track of things. Because when Buchin asked me about the title of my paper, I just said, Shakespearean variations of the female, uh, not knowing how long it would take me <laughs> to bring together uh, 
all the information I would like uh, to convey. Uh, so, just to not to take your time and energy, I'm going to read. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Normally, we should be talking as if we are in a uh, session of a lecture, but uh, here we go. Now, in this talk, I aim to discuss the various types of female characters Shakespeare has produced in his drama. Most of those Shakespearean females, as we know, and as Professor Hallman had mentioned, are as popular as Shakespeare himself. And they have remained as the most prestigious roles for actresses since the time they were produced. This is surprising. This is like, they are like, real human beings walking about. Just to limit my interpretations <coughs> of those females and to avoid misleading interpretations concerning Shakespeare's characterizations, uh, I thought it would be wise to start with a warning by Professor Terence Hawkes who in his book titled Meaning by Shakespeare points out that we can have no objective access to an essential Shakespeare, to the plays themselves or to what they really mean. By this he means that there's no sure way of mastering all that Shakespeare has produced in his dramatic there are too many things we don't under understand, and there are things we don't know, and perhaps we will never know. That was more than 400 years ago, remember? All the same, I would say, it would be necessary to note that the truth concerning Shakespeare's females is embodied in the texts themselves and can most safely be studied in terms of the information these texts provide. So our only guarantee seems to be whatever we have in the texts. So it follows that Shakespearean females are stage figures that only come to life within the process of a close reading or a theatrical performance. Therefore, they are not open to the speculations like real people like you and me who would be subjected during gossips, during uh, analyses would be subjected to such speculations in true life situations. So just as Hamlet is not, cannot be thought to be walking along at Kuzulay, uh, we wouldn't think of Lady Macbeth uh, having a shower uh, in church and we cannot really speculate much about that. By speculation, I mean, uh, perhaps she did this because of that. Perhaps she did that because of that. Remember how we got it. Uh, I am trying to say that if the text doesn't hold a certain kind of information, uh, let the speculations be avoided. But there's another problem. What makes Shakespeare's women so significant, on the other hand, is that they are more true to life than real women. In most of his plays, where females hold an important part, Shakespeare has been able to transform artifice, meaning the products of his craft, 
into a reality that reveals a higher truth than females that exist in flesh and blood. Before I go into the, I, I cannot say discussion, but let's say the survey of the uh, female, female characters, uh, let's talk about the position in which women were held at, uh, at Shakespeare's time, calling witnesses uh, from books. We remember that Shakespeare lived and his women lived within the process of transition from the feudal world to the modern world. Therefore, we shall be talking about the feudal woman and how she tries to cope with things so that uh, she can call herself mother. For the sake of coming up with a neat presentation, I have arranged my discussion of the Shakespearean female upon three coordinates. That his women are products of a male-dominated world, that Shakespeare was nourished by humanistic ideals of the Renaissance, that Shakespeare's analysis of the female is worked out through characterizations based on binary oppositions that inversely relate one character to another. Shakespeare's pre-modern England represents the slow passage from a feudal world to a modern world, as already mentioned. Shakespeare has portrayed both typical 